Welcome to BPEC YouTube channel. So today we will be learning more about in-depth data science roadmap so for 2024. So now whenever we are preparing for data science, I think everyone are having a question means like what exactly we need to learn. So in order to make your roadmap more simplified and more easy. So like what I have done, I divided the content into four parts. So now here there is like career. Uh, means like AI related roadmap and data science uh, related roadmap. So uh, you no need to worry about it. So what is this AI? So I'm making another video related to AI related complete roadmap. Now you can see data science. Now in data science, I divided this entire content into four blocks. The very first block, we call it as fundamentals. Whenever you are planning to get into data science, I think the fundamentals are very important. So what do you mean by fundamentals? So programming like Python, and SQL, these two things are very important. So by learning Python and SQL, you're knocking various opportunities. For example, I want to be a data engineer, Python and SQL is important. I want to be a data scientist, yes, you want Python and SQL. I want to get into data analytics, yes, you want Python and SQL. I want to get into AI, Python and SQL. Even if you are planning to web development, yes, Python and SQL is also important for a web developer. That's the reason the fundamentals are very important. So in lines of your data science interviews, I think this Python and SQL are going to be very important. And apart from it, within Python, if you can learn DSA, data structures and algorithm, that going to be an advantage. DSA is not mandatory for a data scientist, but learning is an advantage. So now apart from it, okay, you completed Python and SQL, you know how to do cleaning in Python, you know how to do EDA in Python, you know how to do data retrieval in SQL, you know how to do data understanding in SQL, you know how to do, uh, what is that? Uh, or oh, you mean like data definition language. So creating that schemas, creating the data pipelines, you know your data models in SQL, like creating ER diagrams and all that. So if you are very good with SQL and Python, then the next step is like you need to master your statistics. So whenever you are getting into statistics, why you need a statistics? So very simple. So statistics is a blueprint, or we can say it is a set of rules, how to collect the data, so whatever the decisions you are making through data, is it right or is it wrong, can be explained with your statistics. I'm investigating a situation. Statistics says, hey, use hypothesis. So like, uh, why to select 95% of data? Why to select, why to remove outliers or why to separate an outlier? What happens if the variance increases? So like, all these explanations are done in statistics. That's the reason. Statistics is very important if you are planning to be a data site. So what you need to learn in statistics, you have summary statistics, you got probability distributions, you got your hypothesis testing, you got your confidence intervals, you got law of large numbers, you got your probability theory, you got Bayesian concepts and all that. So now the weightage is 100%. Whenever you are going to your data science interviews, they focus 100% on your statistics. So I see, I, when I'm speaking with a lot of data scientists who are hiring, uh, this uh, freshers or data scientists, they expect only one thing. So they even speak with me the same thing. Can't, while we are giving a task, I think majority can do it. So if we are having 50 people, all 50 people can do whatever the programming work we are giving, whatever the data science task we are giving. But when we get into the theory topics or whenever we are getting into the concepts like statistics <laughs> or the very basic concepts, they are unable to handle it. So that is the challenge. So now interviewers are primarily focusing on the theory part, on your statistics part, on your machine learning part. So apart from it, you are giving entire time on your programming that may not help you. That's the reason. So I'm giving 100% weightage on your statistics. You need to prepare very good on stats that are going to create a lot of advantage. And the next one is you need to have a very good amount of knowledge on your data visualization. Why you need to have a very good knowledge on data visualization is very simple. So whenever you are trying to get into your statistics, so now that is 100% weightage, and then why data visualization is 50-60% is, now data visualization mostly, we can call it as data analytics. So what is this data analytics? You are able to perform descriptive analytics. There are two types of analytics. There is a descriptive analytics, there is a predictive analytics. So descriptive analytics is an analysis about what happened in the past. So like, uh, like what happened means like how much sales happened, why the sales happened. All that study is called as data analytics or descriptive analytics. And then we got predictive analytics. That's what we can say machine learning. What is predictive analytic major goal is to make an analysis about future or we can call it as a foresight. So I'm saying what would be the sales on tomorrow? 
So like whether a person going to pay the loan or he may not pay the loan on future. So it is a study about future or it is a study about foresight. So which is called as machine learning. So as a data scientist, you can do both data analytic work. You can do both data science work or we can say predictive analytic work. Data scientist can do both data analytic work means like descriptive analytics. He can do even a predictive analytics. Now, various companies, what they are doing, even though you have one or two year experience on data science, still they hire you and they make you to do data analytic work. That's the reason. So like you need to master. So here I gave 50 to 60 percent. But if you can master at least a very good amount of knowledge, any one tool, Power BI or Tableau or Excel, out of these three tools, any one is sufficient. By mastering these data visualization tools, you are able to work on at least one end-to-end -end data analytic project. Means like you can develop a dashboard or you can do forecasting, any of this. Like you are able to do it with the help of data visualization. That's the reason. So data analytic skill set is important. Even if you are building a resume, try to have at least one project on data analytics, one project on machine learning, one project on forecasting. In this way, you need to segregate them in a better way. So now you need to have a very good amount of project, at least one on data analytics that going to create an advantage. So data analytic, Python, SQL, once you completed it, then get into statistics. And once you got into statistics and the last one is like that is, so like you can say all your interview questions are from machine learning. So machine learning is having like very high amount of weightage, means interviewers going to ask you about predictive analytics. Tell me about your end-to-end -end ML project. Even though like data science interview happens on entire machine learning. Some company is going to give a role as data analytics as I said earlier. Now your entire interview is going to be on machine learning. So how what is a machine learning uh, algorithms? So what are the feature selection techniques? What are the feature accuracy improving techniques like uh, we got scaling techniques, we got feature transformation techniques. So we got filter methods, wrapper methods, embedded methods. So when to do scaling, when not to do scaling, what is variance bias trade off point? In this way, there is a lot of theory happens in machine learning. So now you need to master machine learning. You need to master natural language processing. You need to master. So now if you at least master machine learning NLP, that would be sufficient. So deployment, MLOps and deep learning, they are optional. They are not mandatory. So this deployment, MLOps, deep learning going to be mandatory for AI learners. But for data scientists, I think machine learning NLP wouldn't be sufficient. After developing a machine learning model, I can demonstrate that project in various ways. I can communicate that model with clients in various ways. So that no, no need to be only deployment is not only the way we have it. For example, I'm a guy from a uh, non-programming background. I don't know how to deploy a model. I don't even know software engineering. Why? In order to do deployment, you need to have a bit of software engineering knowledge. Now within data science, we got various libraries like Streamlit and all that. They're making our work more easy and more simplified, but in case still, People are finding, man, I'm unable to learn deployment, no need to worry. So just having a good real-time projects on machine learning, NLP, that going to help you. So now just mastering machine learning, natural language processing going to help you. So in case if you have time and if you can master it, learn about deployment, MLOps and deep learning, that would be an advantage. So now, but what I do personally is for my learners, I cover deployment MLOps that going to help them to understand uh, about the end to end life cycle, how the things are happening in a reality, they will be understanding it. So even though they are not implementing it, so in their day to day work, but they will be knowing that end to end procedure that going to help them to crack it in the interviews. So try to keep these points in the brain, the major weightage first fundamentals, then statistics, and then you're getting into your reporting and then your machine learning. That would be a best approach to get into your data science. And okay, I completed my data science. So, so now there is again three pillars. Whenever you are getting into data science, there are actually three pillars for any uh, career transition. So what are the three pillars for any career transition is here we go. Now, whenever you're making any successful career transition is dependent upon these three pillars. What are the three pillars? The very first one is job ready content whatever the content i showcased earlier is a job ready content so now what is the difference between regular content and job ready content is a job ready content people going to know why to use it and when to use it so a regular content they will be knowing things in a high level they are not going deep into it so you need to have a proper depth so we can say job ready content even though you are learning all this content it going to create a weightage of 33 percent why now you are learning the content but you don't have a portfolio. You don't have a real-time work. Whatever you learned it, how you implemented them in a reality, they don't know that. 
For that reason, if you are able to build a portfolio, means if you are able to showcase some real-time projects on data science, on AI in your profile, that's going to create a lot of weightage or a lot of importance. Okay, now you showcased a very good portfolio on your resume. Now you want to have a proper convincing skills. So what is meant by convincing skills? How to speak in the interviews? How to explain this to your interviewers? So how to explain an end-to-end -end project? Who are your team members? Which project management me methodology you used? So what is your daily activities? So now all this you need to have it. So in order to, by explaining them, it's going to create another 33% of your uh, interview cracking ability going to increase. So overall, these three combinations going to give you a successful career transition. And you need to keep one more point in your brain. So whenever you are making a career transition, all the three, so now you need to you need to segregate your problem in the three things. So now you're not getting a job due to lack of knowledge or you're not getting a job due to lack of projects or you're not getting a job due to unable to crack the interviews due to lack of convincing skills. So based on that, by fixing each problem, you're getting close to your goal of career transition. So this formula is applicable not only for a fresher, it is for anyone. So it's not only for data science. You may be planning to make a shift from... Um, a regular profile to a leader or a project management level or you want to make it into cloud any platform i think this three combo is very very important so you need to keep these points in your brain and finally i think whenever you are planning to get into data science in case like you can do it in any of the modes you can do it in a self-study mode you can do it in any of the mode in case if you want to have a clear guidance about all the three things you want to learn a job ready content you want to build a portfolio and if you want to learn how to speak in a convincing skills, you are able to join our data science career transition programs, so which includes data structures and algorithms plus a remote, remote internship. The purpose of remote internship is to build a portfolio in your resume. And once you develop a portfolio in your resume, we will be guiding you on how to convince your interviewers, how to develop that convincing skills. So how to speak in the interviews. We'll be guiding you through a mock interviews. We will be building your resume. We build proper roles and responsibilities and the project descriptions in your resume so that you start getting your interview calls. In case you're unable to clear in interviews, you can get back to us. So we are able to understand where you are making the mistakes and we will be assisting you. So in case if you want to enroll our programs, so before enrolling, I personally suggest book a one-on-one -on -one call with me so we can have a discussion. I can understand your background. I can understand your challenges based on that. I can give a detailed roadmap. So in case if, if data science doesn't suit your profile, it doesn't make sense to invest money on top of it. So let's understand all this in one-on-one -on -one career roadmap call. So like I will be having a discussion with you. We can understand your background based on that. We can make a decision towards your future. Thank you so much. The links are available in the description. Thank you so much. And I hope you like this roadmap. Try to implement it and see how exactly it is like uh, giving you the results. Thank you so much.